All right, so here we go. Um, happy Intersource Day. This is our eighth year of having Intersource Summit. We never stopped during the pandemic. So, um, you know, as he said, it's our 14th summit, but we used to do several a year in different ge uh, geographic locations. And since the rise of the virtual summit, uh, we get a much broader audience doing it this way, but we do still have in-person events, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, these are some examples of in-person events we had before the pandemic. And um, we did have an event earlier this year that we'll talk about. Um, I think we'll probably eventually come up with a hybrid approach that allows us to meet up in person when it's feasible, but to still have this broad appeal event um, virtually. Uh, these are the founders of the Apache Software Foundation, or a few of them anyway. And the reason this slide is here is because Intersource very much owes its existence to the Apache Software Foundation because the method that we teach at Intersource Commons is really just the Apache way. And I think you're going to hear more about that from our keynote speaker today. So I won't say too much more about that now. But I do want to point out to you, if, you've, if this is your first time looking at Intersource Commons, it, people miss some of the nuances of the way that the organization is run. Um, it is completely influenced by the Apache Software Foundation. So we are a member-owned organization. There are members of this organization. There is a yearly nomination process. You can't nominate yourself. Um, it's for people who are not only pursuing Intersource for themselves, but also contributing to the foundation and to the educational outreach that we do so that more and more people will be able to find Intersource. And um, there is an election once a year during the members meeting and then people are notified if during that round they have been selected, uh, nominated to become members. So it's optional, but first the members have to agree that you'd be a good member. Um, it is a lifetime conferment, although you can ask for um, time off or if you don't participate, there's a minimum participation requirement after you become a member. But if you fail to participate um, for a few years in a row, then we would make you an emeritus member. So you can always appeal that if you wanna come back and spend time. So it's meant to be an organization that people commit to over the long haul, and that also helps people's careers over the long haul. So it's an individual conferment. It is not your company that's getting to be a member. It is you as an individual. And that continues even if you change jobs. So hopefully that's clear. Um, this is a quick slide to say a little bit about why people do Intersource. Uh, one of the reasons that they do it uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, the big reason is because they've over-invested in ownership culture. And as a result, they're starting to have silos that are not working very well. And one of the ways to tell that your silo culture is not going well is uh, the upper right-hand slide is you start getting bottlenecks in your, in your process that keep your engineers from being productive. Um, a lot of companies go through an agile transformation hoping to fix this problem. Um, I worked for a company that started out with an agile transformation, very high profile one, uh, right before I started talking about Intersource in 2014. And what I'm here to tell you is I like Agile, but it does not solve this problem. Um, but Intersource can. Another thing that Intersource can solve in the lower left-hand corner, that is emblematic of companies where everybody works in lockstep. That's a well-oiled machine. Sometimes the machines are too well-oiled and you end up losing innovation in that. And we do have some case studies of companies that have used Intersource to break the pattern enough to get some innovation which is a great way to use it. And then the last picture in the lower right, that is to um, talk about the newest uh, employees that you have, which you are, you know, your sort of low end entry level employees are people who are just fresh out of school. And the kids that are fresh out of school right now are not the same as I was when I was fresh out of school. Um, they expect more agency because they've been digital natives basically their whole lives. And one of the things that Intersource does by modernizing your engineering practice, you might also find that you don't have so much um, turnover in your, uh, in your early hires or your, your uh, recent college grad hires. Um, in general, we think that everybody's gonna have to go this way because of this problem or this trend that um, you know, more agency is an expectation now. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Intersource uses the same methods as open source to get more done inside your company. Um, so there's no requirement in your source that you then go on to open source. Although a lot of companies find that they understand open source after they've learned to do inner source 
and they can put together better open source offerings or make better decisions about people donating to open source projects that they depend on. Um, we think it's a better way to engineer. It's easy enough to learn. And once your organization has learned it, plugging people into it is, is relatively easy, just like it is in open source. So it makes onboarding easier. It makes everything easier. Um, although, you know, we're not going to lie to you. It's not always an easy lift to get it started. And that's part of why the organization exists to help people get over that hump. It also definitely supports your team to collaborate, intra-team collaboration across the whole company. It can solve problems of orphan code where um, everybody's gone from a code base and everybody's afraid to touch it. Um, you can, by instituting InterSource, you can create full stack learning and you can reward it when you see it um, and see that, come to see that as an indication that a given employee wants to be considered um, a, you know, with a broader interest to the overall well-being of the company, not just his, his or her narrow assignment. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of companies are talking about their inner source behaviors now. Um, we started this, we were delighted when we got to 20 companies, but you know, we're, we're, we're getting bigger all the time. This is by no means everybody that's doing it. This is just everybody that's, that has told us we can talk about it. So um, we're starting to have people ask to be on this list, which is great to see because they're starting to see it as a recruitment um, uh, advantage. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, sorry, my, for some reason I'm not, there we go. Uh, we have Intersource Commons, um, our main website at intersourcecommons.org. And you can go there if you aren't already there to join the mailing list, which is fairly low traffic, or you can ask for a Slack account which is the best way to interact with our community because we really kind of live on Slack. Although all of our assets end up on this website and there's tons of stuff to look at here, including recordings of every session we've ever recorded from all of our events and all of our community meetings. So there's a lot there. Um, Intersource is full of great people. This is a typical picture from a summit and we could take one like this today, we may later. Um, it's a diverse community with lots and lots of people coming from different, different countries, different types of industries, um, but all with the goal of improving the engineering in their organizations. And sometimes they have a mandate to do that from, uh, from the top. Sometimes they're interested parties at the bottom of the stack that are trying to lift their company. And we've seen some great stories about that. A lot of them fall in love with the community and end up working on the board or, or in the committees. And um, so you can do all of that. It's, we're very, very welcoming. We're, there's kind of no barrier to entry. Uh, and we run under Chatham House rules, which you're gonna hear about a few times. That means that anything that you hear during a regular inner source engagement is considered secret to the organization for the purposes of who said it or what industry they're from. So you can talk about what you hear at inner source commons, but you can't do it in a way that fingers or shames anybody else. Um, and that has worked well for us now for, for eight years and, um, and counting. We haven't had any breaks of that trust. Um, obviously, we're not making promises, but we would definitely take somebody aside if they did break that trust. So um, feel free to jump in to Intersource Commons. It's a pretty safe place. Um, we are starting, oops, I think I skipped one. Let me go back one, sorry. Sometimes I'm having to click twice. Yeah, let's try it. There we go. That's the one I wanted to show you. So um, we are starting to see awareness of inner stores growing in the mainstream community. Um, the, the bleeding edge community has been interested in us since the beginning. Red Monk has been interested in us forever. But um, this is Gartner recognizing inner source on the hype cycle, which means that they think we have five to 10 years uh, to get to our peak of uh, people using this method which is kind of um, interesting to hear because we've been at it a while and we're seeing so much growth. We can't imagine what five or 10 years is gonna look like. Um, but you know, people are talking about us and you're gonna hear more about analysts talking about us because this was a signal to us to start talking to analysts. And, and uh, so there'll be, there'll be more to see. Um, we're starting to see conferences that we didn't organize <laughs> that are specialists in, in InterSource. And this is an example of one that I'm going to speak at later this year. Um, but it's by no means the only one. 
that I'll speak at this year. Um, IEEE has been very interested in, and as has ACM, and one of our members, Klaus Jan Stoll, has, um, I think, sent in more research papers about Intersource than any other single advisor uh, over a long career of looking at this method. So um, we're definitely starting to have outside of our circle interest, but we also have inside the circle interest. So I'd like to introduce you to Adi Gerard, who is a relatively recent member of the community. And we like to recognize people that have shown up and um, you know, want to help us. She attended this event that we had a little bit earlier in the year, and she's going to talk about it a little bit. Hey, thanks, Denise. I'm so excited to talk about the InterSource gathering that happened in Devlin in September. It was a phenomenal event where we had nine workshops. We talked about the state of InterSource, and we had a very exciting LEGO experience. Within the uh, group were people from various backgrounds across the globe, a very dynamic group, um, and we all came to connect, create, and contribute to InterSource. So looking at the workshops, there was a magical element to it in the fact that every single person who was around was able to be valued for their contribution. And it didn't matter if they were the foremost expert in inner source or someone completely new. We all got to deliver something. And each and every one of those instances provided valuable feedback as they were addressing real life challenges, questions, and problems we had in the moment. And the next thing that we did that was really fantastic was the Lego experience. And in the Lego experience, we talked about our individual contributions and our collective contributions and how that builds the inner source community as a whole. One of the things that I think was so powerful about this gathering is the fact that you could see the values of inner source really come alive in the people who were attending there. I had an amazing time and I'm very much looking forward to the very next gathering. Thanks so much, Adi. And she really was brand new to the process. So, um, oh, sorry, that's, that's house noise you're hearing. I apologize for that. So moving along, I want to announce now our outstanding contributors in 2022. We feel very strongly about rewarding and praising um, involvement in this community because, uh, you know, some of us do get paid to be here but most of us are volunteers and most of us are really compelled by this idea of inner source and fixing engineering the same way that open source sought to level the playing field a little bit in the, in the large. And um, I, we all have different reasons for being here, but what we really like to recognize people that have gone beyond, over and above what, what a person that's just self-interested would do. So here they are this year. Um, going from the right, Yuki Hattori, has not single-handedly, but I'd say he's the ringleader, um, created a Japanese language version of our website and a Japanese language community looking at InterSource. And this is super, super exciting. We're very, very happy to see all that work. Um, it was a big surprise even to O'Reilly when they got the request uh, for a release to localize all of our books into Japanese. So this is just a fabulous thing. And, and thank you, Georg, for clapping. Uh, anybody else that wants to clap for this one, I'll clap for it. I think it's an amazing contribution. In the middle, we have uh, Klaus Jan Stoll. He's an old friend of ours. He's the one I said a little while ago has probably published more academic papers about InterSource than anybody else. Um, and he helps us. He's a, a, a member and a board member, and he helps us with our annual survey and with understanding and sizing the market that we're addressing and uh, you know the constituents and what they're interested in. So he's done a really good job with that again this year and the, some, uh, the um, survey, you know, we're looking forward to some great results there. And then um, Katie Schlutz, I hope I said that right, Katie, um, is an example of somebody who turned up for, for work, it's her job to add Indeed to um, work on their inner source effort. But she came, for instance, to the gathering, not just, ready to be there, but ready to help lead it. And she made us badges so that we would all know each other's names. And she you know, was super involved and is, continues to be involved in the marketing community. And um, we're just really happy about all three of these folks and their amazing efforts. And um, let's take a second to applaud them, shall we? Thanks, guys.
And that is mostly what I have to say this morning. Um, so my next thing is to hand you off to your keynote speaker. Um, and hopefully we're ready to do that now. Meryl, there you are. Um, this is Meryl Kranz. Uh, she and I have been colleagues at, at Apache Software Foundation for a while now. Um, I've been an Apache member um, kind of since, all, not exactly the beginning, but pretty soon after. I was an early female member. And as more women have joined, Apache's become a much, um, in my opinion, a uh, much kinder, gentler place. And part of that is down to Merle. So I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say about uh, her keynote. And take it away, Merle. 